teach IIT. It's like we are, you know, so the basic, the foundation, the fundamentals is IIT training. I don't know that, you know, Manish knows what's in, involved in getting to IIT. Uh, when he got to IIT, he didn't speak any English. He got through IIT without speaking English. So we're like, we use those examples, we're training parents. So I think um, it's an uphill battle, and, and regulations aren't any easier to raise capital and to invest in schools, and it's pretty convoluted. Um, I think if they open it up to private sector, there are a lot of good people who want to get in, we're scared. We spend a lot of time on just sort of the regulatory issues, and they're unnecessary. In terms of economics, um, schools are making a lot, can make a lot of money. No, we're not. <laughs> it's because we're, uh, you know, when we go and we put in computer lab with 40 computer screens, uh, we upgrade the SIS facilities, we put safety mechanisms, we put computer uh, um, libraries, science lab, we upgrade the teachers, we upgrade. So we end up losing money for the first couple of years, which I'm fine with. Uh, but I think it's a good base to have to sort of build a reputation for the school. The one school, we first one, we're now starting to see pretty good uh, enrollment for this year. And we'll hopefully, um, it, it, take, it takes a time to realize it for a while. And the school we got into the first one was had a quite a bad reputation. So it just cycle takes a while. Uh, so economics are challenging, and uh, you want investors who are long-term supporters. We're actually looking at some pretty interesting CSR models now. And if we crack that, then the funding becomes easy, it becomes a good model. Um, then we can ramp up very quickly. Because in doing it, you know, the, the economics for an investor is a little bit of a challenge. Um, thank you. Good evening. Uh, thank you for sharing your uh, experiences, your life experience, and uh, it's uh, definitely an honor to hear it. Um, I, uh, since you've uh, led an American life, uh, I would like to know from you, uh, with respect to Indian and entrepreneurs, where are we lagging or where should we uh, sharpen our skills in order to be in the global market? Thank you. So I find uh, a lot of the entrepreneurs I've met very impressed. Very impressed. I think, look, I think it's uh, entrepreneurs sort of a different mindset anyway, right? And uh, to get into it, to take that kind of risk, you're sort of different DNA a little bit. So I found some very good ones. And even in the US, you, know, you can't say that every entrepreneur is great. There are people who struggle, who don't make it, who don't have the right skills, people who have skills even don't make it. Um, so I've been very impressed with the people I've met, a lot of them. I think what's lacking is the ecosystem. Um, we're in the US, I can pick up a phone and I can go to an area and get 10 people I can talk to. I don't think, at least I haven't seen that's here as much yet. It's building. Um, you know, to, to, um, also, for people to understand what entrepreneurs will do, especially in the technology sector, I don't think the appreciation here is, is here as well, uh, yet. I think the US has been doing this a lot longer, especially through the 2000 cycle. We really saw what a tech entrepreneur goes through. You know, I had friends who made a lot of money and then immediately they had stock in a company, gone. And they, had, they want to taxes on top of that. So it got really bad for a lot of people, and a lot of people made a lot of good money. Um, so I think the ecosystem needs to build, and I think it is. But Ty is doing the 700 people that uh, Tycon here, I was an ambassador by Tycon, they had 700, 800 people. So the excitement is here, and I think this is exactly the, the sort of a, a platform we need to start promoting entrepreneurship. And it's not a bad thing, I think now also parents are appreciating that. You know, they've heard some success stories like TK, you know, go and do it now. So hopefully that helps. And, and family support is incredible, right? I mean, I could not possibly do this without my wife tolerating the travel and like, we don't have kids, so, you know, you know a thousand kids, but not, not anyone sitting in Atlanta. So it makes it a little bit easier, but having family support is incredible. If you don't have a spouse or a family that's supporting you, it becomes become very challenging. Thank you. Anil here, Anil is good. Uh, really impressive. I mean, uh, I'm absorbed by your life story, especially the giving back back part in the way to enter the phase of life, the schools, or even the uh, UI port. But you know, about the schools are lagging down. How are your schools with a different culture fitting in the Indian system of things, in education system? Looks like a square uh, peg in a round hole. I mean, the, the system which uh, kind of celebrates meritocracy on one hand, but demeans failure. If a 
child fails in one subject in one class, if he has to repeat a year and things like that, how, how does it work out? Very good question. In fact, I've been struggling with that one point. So we had a 10th um, grader, she failed Telugu. We held her back. And I'm like, you know, she's made, she's in Hyderabad, she's made it through 10th grade. And unless she's going to go teach PhD, go teach Telugu and get a PhD in Telugu, it's irrelevant at this point. We don't need to hold her back for this. Same thing, I mean, you know, if you ask me, how many of us have used the subjects we learned in school, right? It's completely unnecessary. I think what we need, what I'm really actually um, starting to do some um, sort of uh, brainstorming around with the team is how do we get these kids to find what their passion is, what their interest is, and they'll automatically find it, right? I didn't do well through school, but when I got into college, um, I was just started enjoying accounting for all you know, the subjects, right? How boring. But I started enjoying it, and I got into it, and I you know, thrived in it, right? So I think just finding the right path is very critical. And you're absolutely right. Uh, the sub so we have to teach everything. We're sort of bound by these uh, um, restrictions. But we are trying. In, in terms of the culture, so I, I sat in a fifth grade one day, and I raised my hand and said, I don't understand that. It started laughing, you know. And I said, do you anyone of you know? And one girl said, yes. I said, go explain it to me. And now the kids actually ask questions. So we want them to be able to ask those questions. We have, we have these uh, digital classes. It's out of control. Kids are screaming answers. And the, you know, when the issue is like, you can't either control control. I said, this is, I'd rather have this than a kid sitting like this. Right? So we're, the, the, those kind of changes we're making. And kid, trust me, those kids love it. You know, they, um, they like it when we, they come give us high five, shake our hand, welcome back, sir, how are you? That's more important than sort of having him sit in the class being him or her being bored in the school. Have one last question. Yeah. Uh, how do you plan to measure your success on your report? I mean, what is the objective and how do you measure the success? First, first success would be starting <laughs> in a city. Um, so I think, um, look, I think we'll start seeing changes pretty quickly in these, right? And hopefully in terms of um, It'll be attitude change. I mean, if you can start seeing that, I don't know if we'll, we'll be able to sort of have an immediate impact, uh, but I think it'll take us some time. And through the education, um, we'll need to develop it. Again, I think even building it out will still take us a little bit of time. So I'm, quite honestly, I don't have a um, full rate of success. For me, the first step is to get in. Uh, in fact, when we were trying to do a pilot in Pune, they were asking, I said, I don't know the answers. And they were asking, like, what, what about the, like, don't know. So for us, I want to test it figure out where the failures are, where it will work, where it won't work, and then figure out you know, what the success factors are going to be. Right now, we don't even know uh, if it works end to end, to be honest. The testing environment works. But sort of, you know, what I've done, testing and so forth. Uh, but once we get it started, we'll start filtering those phases out. One related question on your report. So what is the revenue model for that? And how do you make money out of this? A couple things. One is obviously uh, licensing fee. Uh, we did sort of charge, you know, per seat or uh, charge the government, obviously. This is to help them. And secondly, it will generate revenue for them, right? Because uh, with, uh, with the fines, it will generate revenue. And more importantly, bring discipline to the city. Even if it's a cost to them, they're spending money today, right? So for the police force, they're paying them. Um, so it's a cost to them. So this is just another cost, but hopefully it will actually generate revenue and bring the discipline, which unfortunately they haven't been able to do for all. Um, shortage of resources and, and other issues. Yeah, thank you so much, Arish. For thank you very much. I really appreciate the time. Thank you. I request uh, another Thai Global Trustee, Mr. Vishwas Mahajan, to please come and propose a word of thanks. Why I said another Thai Global Trustee? Because we have two Global Trustees here. Harish is also a Global Trustee and a Vice Chairman All the of, of Thai Global. <laughs> So if you have any questions, uh, complaints of Thai, please. Vishwas, <laughs> please. <laughs> so, but uh, it's been such a privilege, uh, really, uh, Harish, hearing you. Your early life as a 15-year-old boy landing by yourself in the U.S. Motels, uh, you, know, if, if, you know, how many of us start in an industry and end up in that industry? That's usually what happens, right? We're too afraid to do other things. And then from hotel, motel to education, then to finance and... Uh, Furniture and uh, 
and now uh, the stuff that you're doing. Really, really, I mean, one thing that really I've taken away is uh, uh, how comfortable has Harish been with the the changes in in his in his life, and he's taken them in their stride and kind of worked with that and made um, you know fortune uh, from whatever he has been dealt with. So it's wonderful uh, hearing this story, and although I do have the privilege of working alongside him uh, on the Thai Global Board, I have never, I, I think I would have never heard this side of Harish. So i you know, and I think not many of the, the others have heard it as well. So thank you very much, Harish. Uh, it's been such a wonderful, uh, wonderful uh, experience hearing you. You know, I, I was always worried, uh, you know, because uh, Harish, although he has the name of Harish Mamtani, you would expect to hear Sindhi, uh, you know, tone from him, but he is very American. And sometimes we don't catch all the, you know, things that he tells. Uh, so I was worried, but I think you, you, we could, we could actually, you know, follow your accent. I think after the first one or two. <laughs> so I hope you were able to catch that. I, and I'm speaking for all of us here, right? So, so that was good. Um, so uh, uh, Harish, uh, you know, I know that you came here to Pune just for this event. It was not. Uh, you could have easily cancelled it. Last week when we met, uh, you know, he said that he might be coming here to start the Pune Police project, but the project never got started. So, I was really worried, I'll get a call, Harish, I can't make it, which was, sorry, this meeting has not, been. but, you know, he, he had that commitment and he kind of uh, didn't, uh, didn't kind of, uh, you know, he didn't cancel that and thank you very much for coming in spite of your, so he just came here this morning and, uh, and just doing this event and going back. Of course, he did something else today with Sonali, but that's another unintended outcome of the day. So, um, having said that, um, you know, uh, Vaibhav, uh, Vaibhav, we've, for those of you who've heard Vaibhav in his story a few months ago, you know what a great guy he is. I mean, today he's been on the other side of the table, but uh, but he's been such an interesting person and uh, the, the, the story about him that is yeah, actually it says very little. He's so, done so many other things. So those of you who have heard his story know it. Though have those who haven't actually go to YouTube and see the video. So, uh, Bhavo, thank you very much for for facilitating this felicit facilitating conversation. Facilitate. Sorry about that uh, conversation. Uh, all of you, uh, thank you very much this evening for coming. Uh, I think it's a great audience. Uh, some of you from J4E who decided to uh, to show up here. Um, you know, they heard me on this last Saturday and I said, why don't you come over and hear Harish. So I hope this has been a great uh, experience for you as well. Um, and uh, and I hope to see you here in other other events, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. So uh, as uh, Ajay Hiraskar uh, said earlier at the time of uh, introducing Thai, uh, 30th April, this Saturday, we have the launch of our newest Nurture uh, initiative. Um, so that that happens on uh, on Saturday. 12th May, we have uh, another such session like this with Shashank Deshpande, very, very interesting guy, a design guy uh, who built a business doing creative, uh, you know, designs and stuff and has now got a very um, impressive exit uh, and to a, a South American company. So, it's, it's a pretty interesting story, you know. Uh, but but uh, Shekhar, Shashank is going to be with us on the 12th. Uh, 26th May, we have a breakfast session with, uh, with, uh, with setting up business in Germany. Um, we have 26th May, my story session with the CIO of um, Tata Motors. Uh, he is a very interesting guy and uh, he's, um, he's actually going to talk about how Tata Motors as a company and potentially a customer for some of us uh, is actually changing track. So it will be very interesting to hear him as well. Um, a workshop on innovation is planned on the 28th. You know, we talk about innovation and it's kind of often talked about word, but how do you actually create innovation, whether it's a startup or a large corporation, what are those little things that we, we can do? Uh, I think if that's something on your agenda, it's, pro it's probably a good idea to, uh, to, uh, to be a part of this workshop. And then there are some more uh, things that will get planned as we go along. So uh, I think all of you will get onto the mailing list of Thai Pune and you'll start getting mails from Mandar and Madura. So please stay tuned to that and I just uh, talked about a few events that are happening but there are many more that will happen. I also want to thank uh, you know all the charter members of Thai uh, who showed up here today. Uh, Ajay uh, who's uh, been kind enough to do an introduction to this event and uh, finally uh, as I said uh, 
you know, let tie happen to you. For those of you who haven't, uh, who are not tie novices yet, and who are not wearing a uh, a badge like this with a with written in a black pen uh, and something on a red pen, you should consider uh, yourself being written in a black pen next time by being a member. <laughs> Thank you very much, and I hope you enjoyed the evening uh, networking before the before the session as well. That's what we do uh, at networking over chai. And uh, and then a beautiful session like this. Thank you very much. All of you.